Spiritual Connections with Jen and John. Welcome. We hope you enjoy our conversations on all things spiritual and how we as spiritual beings can survive on this planet Earth in our human form. The topics we choose are in the moment. May you find them to be of interest to you along your own spiritual pathway. Episode 1 Welcome to Spiritual Connections with Jen and John. I'm an Australian mindfulness master and spiritual master and I do a little hypnotherapy as well as be as well as being a, a lived experience recovery coach. And now I'll just ask Jen to introduce herself. Hello, I'm Jenny. Jen, <laughs> and I'm a spiritual coach and mentor, big therapist and author, very much within the mental health sector. Yeah, well, we're both in the mental health sector, that's for sure, Jen. It's the most important thing. You know, we often hear people say mind, body and soul, but I really believe that's a bit back to front because we can't really get our mind right until we get our soul right or our spirit. And we can't really get our body right until we get our mind right. So there's a kind of flow on effect, if you like if you like, but it starts with spirit. So and when we say spirit, what does that mean to you, Jen? Spirit to me is the very essence of our soul. It's the very essence of our being. It's who we are at source. Perfect. Yeah, for me, well, I see myself as energy and once we make a connection with source energy, it can become very, very powerful. It makes all things possible. You know, typically my day starts, so what are we doing today? Then I quieten my mind, which is mindfulness. I silence my mind and listen, not with my ears, but with my heart, I listen deeply and deeply and it's amazing when you start doing this daily how your life kind of becomes prioritized and even if we've got 500 things to do and they say to be successful we need 500 things to do of priority and it's quite amazing just how your life does come prioritized once you start walking with, with your spiritual partner, your source, it, it's quite amazing. Yeah. Your life kind of becomes synchronized in, in a way. What does that word mean to you, Jen? Yeah, that's, a, yeah that's absolutely beautiful. Synchronicity um, is when you're, you're just in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, and everything just falls into place. I have a lot of that happening in my life. It's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful things just happen exactly when they're meant to. So there's, like yourself, there's no point trying to push. There's no point trying to trying to rush and trying to run before you can walk, because divine time, you know, already has it all in hand. So it's a matter of trusting. So it's a matter of trusting. And believing in those synchronicities and for me in the morning I um, begin with gratitude I'm thankful that I've been able to have a good night's sleep in a nice warm and cozy bed when I've been homeless that at least I'm still alive the following morning and I'm still here and I'm still growing 
So yeah, synchronous, there's even synchronicities in that because they're all massive, massive challenges that we learn from. Yeah, uh, it's beautiful, Jen. We have a lot in common. We have a lot in common because I've been homeless as well when I was a teenager, way back. Yeah, but those, those memories never really go away. And now and again, you know, the, those sorts of, yeah, not so much trauma, but there's certainly, so much trauma, but there certainly was trauma. It pops into our, into our consciousness. Yeah, you know, at the odd, odd times and whatever else. And it can have an effect on us if we allow it. And yeah, just recently I, I come up with my, my own therapy and I called it RAG ragtherapy.com I, I did a little web page rag stands for resistance acceptance and gratitude and when these things from our past show up and they're, they're most often very unhelpful very unhelpful of course or they can be negative or if any, anything pops up unhelpful or negative or if we notice we're being resistant to especially to change then we use acceptance to overcome that resistance and then go to gratitude, creating new pathways in our mind. So gratitude is a very powerful practice. So when we have that unhelpful thought or past trauma shows up, then we, we practice mindfulness, be mindful, pause, connect, pause, connect, connect with where we are, who we're with, and especially with source energy, then we go to gratitude and think of a, a couple of things we're grateful for. And that shifts our mind from the negative to the positive. Very simple therapy. Yeah. So, yeah, that, you, yeah, that, you, that, yeah. yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. And they are very simple therapies and they just, it's just very simple to, to do that. But yet people get stuck in that mindset of fear. And it's it for me. I mean, my tagline on my business is changing perceptions. We can always turn a certain situation another way around, and you'll always find that there are different ways that you can do things, or a, di a different way that you can look at things, and it just completely changes the whole scenario. I mean, my my actual experience of homelessness was experience of homelessness was absolutely amazing because. Uh, apparently this is unheard of within 24 hours I was offered somewhere uh, my own place and within 48 hours I've moved into it and that's absolutely unheard of for somebody to become homeless like within the last 24 hours previous to that so these synchronicities they're miracles as well and we could we can all we can all bring these miracles into our lives. We can do that by simply, like you say, just simply pausing. Just take a step back, take a breath and pause. And in that moment, everything changes. It's so true. Yeah. And when we practice mindfulness, of course, which is a spiritual, which is a spiritual practice, it's amazing that the difference that pause makes mm -hmm. and because one time i used to react but for a long time now i pause and that way something wise or intelligent drops in my mind which always amazes me and then i respond and there's a big difference between reacting and responding just like you say it's quite amazing and when we set our intention, and it's, it really is about intention, some people use prayer to, to let their intention be known. Uh, and as long as something I've learned in my life, I, I try not to believe too much. I, I stay that way. It keeps me open to everything. But one thing I do believe is open to everything. But one thing I do believe is God, the universe, reads hearts. 
not minds, hearts. So when you set your intention, as long as it's done with a good heart, a kind heart, a giving heart, and it's about then somehow the universe reads that, reads your heart, and then takes action. And the action, of course, has to happen through other people. And that's, that's just how it works. And, and that's how we end up with a synchronized sort of life. It's amazing. So any listeners out there, set your intention with a good heart and then live with mindful awareness because we need to be living in awareness so that we don't miss those little things that you know it could be a, it could be someone's suggestion to go and see such and such whatever all these little things because quite often those little things turn into the big things and and i'm sure we've both experienced that hey jen <laughs> yes certainly i'm sure we have i know i have yeah, my my perceptions are my I set my intentions via affirmations. I find affirmations really powerful, especially when they begun. I'm a, I'm a great advocate of Louise L. Hay. Her her story is what helped me and set me on my um, journey, healing journey. And the three most important ones from there that uh, I believe are to begin your sentences with "I am." I have and I can. You're putting it in the positive, but you're also putting it in the now moment. So for some people who don't perhaps understand in quite what intention may mean, you can use it as affirmations. You, could, you can say that it's affirmations and do it that way. That's, that's another way that I've found helps. Have you any uh, more ways, John, that help? Are, are so powerful and there's lots of little books around that you can get or, or card decks like yours where, where you know you, you can shuffle them up and, and draw a card and you know there usually are affirmations and they can be quite powerful yeah affirmations and they can be quite powerful yeah you I'm reminded of a friend of mine and he, he owns the local Toyota dealership. Uh, he's a, he manages. A, he's a, he's a good guy. And I said to him one day, and I often say this to people, you know, when I think of. And he said affirmations because it's important to him. And he can buy little flip calendars even, you know, mm -hmm. and they've got a daily affirmation. Yeah. It's another great way to start our day. Yeah. So that's a good one, Jen. Yeah. yeah. I love how you say, uh, I can, and I, I will, and keep, keep the self-talk very positive. And when we notice, you know, I can't, well, raising my, and any time they, they used to say, I can't, I used to say, can't means don't want to. Yeah, <coughs> can't means don't want to. And they thank me for that now. So, you know, you said I can, I am. You said I can, I am, I will. Yeah. I have. I have, yeah. That's great. I like that. And I might use it. Thanks, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so, I can do this. Yeah. I am. Uh, braver than I think I am I am able to create yeah. because well because of, of my source energy the, the great creator and in Aboriginal culture uh, the great creator is called Bayami that's the Aboriginal word for the, the great creator and once we have that connection with the great creator, the army, then we become creators. Absolutely. Don't, don't we not? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's great. 
Yeah. And in Aboriginal culture, they also have the evil one, which is called Mamu. Mamu. And some of the Dreamtime stories are really interesting because, well, because, well, Mamu, he, he created insects, you know, mosquitoes and nasty little insects and whatever else in plague proportions. So in response to that, Bayami created birds to eat those insects. Yeah, that's just oh. a story that comes to mind. But it's beautiful. And we can be creators too. And how we do that? Well, we by practicing mindfulness is is a beautiful way because once we start pausing throughout our day, just pausing, it only takes a few seconds, we pause. That that silence, that place of nothingness, that, that's where everything is. Mm. And no matter what we're creating, whether it's words or music or it, it can be anything, there's so many things we can create. And always it comes out of that silence. It, it's a beautiful thing. But we need to foster our relationship with spirit to be able to, to do that. And boy, does it make life a whole lot better. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it certainly does, John. It certainly does. Because hidden within, not hidden within, within our very soul essence there, there's every single bit of wisdom that we ever could need. So there's the wisdom to create. There's the wisdom to be who we want to be. And there's the wisdom inside. And people will often say, well, you know, then you'll go on these like I can't and things like can't and things like that. And I'm... <clears throat> I've done that. Obviously, I did a lot of that. And even now, you know, I'm not perfect. Those kind of things will still slip in and I'll catch myself mid-flow on something like that. But putting it into the I can is what brings you that you get more motivation, you get more life, you become brighter and more bubbly and you've just got a bigger zest for life so that you can live your best life. When you just sit and pause for that second, even in the midst of something horrendous, stuff out for a second, it'll change the whole scenario. And that's, oh. where, and that's where the magic lies in that wisdom. It's magic, all right. Especially when I look back on my dark past, I call it dark past, I call it dark because... You know, there was a 15 year period in my life from 1982 to 1997 when I was stuck in the mental health system. And you know, I had a lot of depression. I was even suicidal at one, one stage. And, but these days, because I had a spiritual awakening and that's what changed everything for me. And it, it's quite amazing, actually. But do we need to go through dark times to be able to walk in the light? What do you think? To walk in the light? What do you think, Jen? From my own, yeah, because from my own lived experience, I would say yes, because that's how our soul evolves and grows. Because we've come here, I believe that we've come here in this human form, in this human form to experience all of these things. Because like yourself, I've had that, I've had more than one dark night of the soul. <laughs> I've had quite a few over the years. And each one just brings you out the other side stronger and stronger and stronger. And personally, this last one has brought me out into my own sovereignty. I am responsible for me and no one else. I am my own creator source. So I am my own sovereignty. Therefore, what I choose, I receive. So if I'm choosing to have these harsher lessons, that's why I've received them. And then I'll learn the lessons from them. And the main thing I know why I'm here in this lifetime, it's about love. Love is the answer to everything. Love is absolutely all and end all. It's our essence of being. It's who we are. It's who we are in spirit. 
And in this human form, it's who we are from our heart center. And that's where everything comes from. That's where your wisdom comes from in this human source. But from if you're tapping into that, you'll tap, if you're tapping into that, you'll tap into creator source as well, whoever, whatever you want to call it. That's excellent, Jen. Yeah, there's a very famous uh, British musician who said, love is all there is. Mm -hmm. And you probably know that's John Lennon. In fact, I can tell you um, my the song to self that channeled through me, that's gifted to the universe, began with that very first word, love, when I was in the bath one day. And this had never happened to me before. This was the first time I'd ever had any chin channel through. And it started with lovely went into that, singing that John Lennon song. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that, that's where that came from. So perhaps John Lennon's wisdom is what channeled through me to bring out that song for self or song to self. Yeah. yeah. Every chance that's true. Amazing. Every chance that's true. Amazing. Yeah. Love is all there is, and uh, so true. And once we start living with with that love as in foremost in our thoughts, if you like, and our actions, then fear t takes a back seat. Because, you know, I see things quite simply, fear and love, and we always have a choice. And I'm sure the dark and the light you know, both drop things into our mind. We can, it's up to us to choose. And quite often things drop in my mind and I go, whoa, nah, that's from the dark side. Yeah. You know, because I'm a bit of a Star Wars fan, I must admit. <laughs> May the force be with you. you know? And I, I just say to myself, nope, I'm not going there. I prefer to walk, walk in love. I'll stick with love. Yeah. You know, love is the answer. Yeah. It is all there is. Yeah. It is. And, and, and what a beautiful way um, to end the session today. We can send out love to everybody that's listening. And thank you so much. And thank you, John. It's excellent that we're able to have these chats, you in England and me in Australia, mm -hmm. you know, on opposite sides of the world. It's amazing. Anyhow, I'll, I'll just say, Mindful, love and light always, Jen, and bye for now. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, John.